done once it's done transcribing, I'll also add notes if we missed anything um, to the HackMD. Um, just before we start, I see some people have joined. Um, and so I'll quickly go through the agenda. And then if anything is there that you'd like to add, just shout out and just um, yell it at the top of your lungs and, uh, and we'll add it. So I just want to give some quick team updates, um, also updates on 047, where we stand with this. Uh, we are looking for feedback on vote extensions. So vote extensions is part of ABCI 2.0. Um, we can share the screen and uh, go through the ADR. Uh, ben is, is leading that work. Uh, a discussion on vesting accounts. Um, I'm not sure who put that in, but we can definitely discuss it. ADR 33, internal message passing. So uh, there was an ADR merged, um, I believe, almost a year ago um, on a internal message and internal query uh, routers. And we'd like to um, begin working on that. But before we uh, begin working on it, we just want to put a, uh, do a refresher for everyone in the community to just make sure that it's still applicable and it's still a design that people are on board with. Um, Cole also mentioned that uh, he wanted to go through the, him and Mantis are working on a mid module fork and just kind of have a conversation about it and um, show some features that they're adding. From that list, is there anything else that people would like to add? Uh, you mentioned Mentis. What is this? Uh, Mentis is a person. Oh, OK. <laughs> awesome. Um, sweet. So let's get started with the team updates. So um, I'll start with 047. So with 047, we are um, debugging one final issue um, that will, uh, oh, actually, that reminds me. I'm going to talk about Hubble. Um, we're debugging one final issue with uh, Proto Registry. So let me just pull up the issue so you can get an idea. Um, we should have a new public testnet out tonight that um, will incorporate uh, WASM and IBC. Um, the IBC team um, has released a alpha uh, release, and WASM, um, Alex, has been our uh, work. Um, fixing and getting ready for the uh, 047 update. And so we're going to run a test net and announce it, and then everyone will be able to play with it. The One of the final blockers that we're tr still trying to dive into um, to better, there was a solution proposed, but um, the, the solution didn't, uh, could have still um, led to some issues. Um, but basically, when we're using a new, when you're using GRPC reflection, in 047, there seems to be a uh, invalid file descriptor, um, and so we want to be able we want to remedy the situation for a particular reason, and that reason right now um, kind of leads into the second point. Um, but uh, we recently um, Aaron knocked out of the park um, in a few days a new tool called Hubble. Um, so what Hubble is is basically a multi-chain command. So right now, um, it supports the auto CLI, um, and it, auto CLI currently only supports queries. And what it can do is it will use the chain registry, and you will be able to create a, it will create a config. You will be able to set gRPC endpoints. It will when you call a NIT on that chain, it will generate the commands that are uh, the query for the uh, modules on that chain. Um, so this will help with, instead of having to download six binaries to query six different chains, if they all have custom modules, you can now use one binary. Um, there's some, some inspiration from the uh, product from Stranger Lens, um, and now uh, it's Hubble. Uh, and now we've uh, released Hubble. There will be a announcement. Hopefully we can create a little character to signify Hubble as well. Um, the Giancarlo on the team is working on transaction support. So in the near future, we'll be able to support transactions. And then there's also uh, design uh, being uh, worked on right now to add transaction signing. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to use one tool for every chain in the Cosmos instead of 90 different binaries. Um, I see that there's. I have one question, if I may. Yeah. 
like normally like if you if you if you want to use like one, any of the core transaction or a query yes then you can use any binary like i can use okay. let's say yes. binary to query uh, gaia yes so um, what is the advantage of hubble so you can query the core modules but um every chain does not only hold the core modules um, not even the hub only holds the core modules they have they have their own custom modules and so now, if you want to go query state from their custom modules, let's say the TWAP or the swap module on Osmosis, the leverage module on mm. UMI, um, they need to go download those binaries. But now um, you oh, can I call see. Hubble init UMI, and then it will generate you a list of, um, of commands that you can do on the chain. And, so, and then it will display the swap module and various queries you can do in that module. Oh, nice. So this is the... I mean, is it like importing the the proto files and like including into that binary? Um, it's not including the proto files. It's it's based off. I mean, it's working off the file descriptors from gRPC reflection. Um, and so, um, I, I don't know if you can construe that as like importing the proto files, um, mm -hmm. but potentially, um, I'm not well versed on the on the terminology there. Um, and then it will just uh, generate everything based off the file descriptors. Is there anything I'm missing, Aaron? Uh, so it tries to download basically the full file descriptor set. Currently, uh, for chains that are live, it tries to use uh, gRPC reflection as kind of a fallback. gRPC re reflection doesn't really give you a great way to get all the file descriptors. Um, in 47, we've added this uh, reflection service, which lets you get all the file descriptors. And um, yeah, there's one bug with it that we're trying to fix before the 47 release. So new chains that upgrade to 47 should have basically full support for this and there's also auto CLI customization options that modules can specify to like customize the way their CLI commands get um, generated by Hubble. Um, An example that of that um, can be seen here and we're working on documentation. Um, mm. This is a rough uh, example of if you add something like this then you can add your own custom uh, information and positional arcs um, to to your auto CLI to be used with Hubble. So, so what's the like um, recommended way for these integrations? I mean, like the, the vision is that it will work fully off uh, online and use the reflection as Aaron man, you mentioned, or we should basically contribute and uh, push uh, I don't know some proto files or or generated files. Uh, it's just going to work off reflection. So, um, sorry, Aaron, you were going to say something. I mean, in your modules, you so one thing we might want to also discuss here, and I mentioned it in the chat, is the core API, which is now um, pretty far along. Um, so you'll you'll implement this auto CLI options uh, extension interface on your app module, and then you can return these options with customization, and then this will get served up by a gRPC server. Um, for auto CLI. Um, you know, if you don't provide this, then it will try to choose some default options based on like its heuristics. Um, yeah, okay, so it's full. Hmm? So it queries and downloads the, the descriptors for hmm. uh, uh, a gRPC. Yep. Okay, okay, yeah, I thought that, you know, um, like. Uh, like uh, chains would need to like contribute here and and push some of the of the files. Yeah, amazing. Awesome. Um, yeah, and uh, also wanted to Aaron mentioned um, the core API. So we can briefly go over the core API. Um, what the what the core API aims to do is define a few interfaces for modules that depend on. Um, this has uh, Aaron. Do you want to? touch on um, specific items here? Sure. Um, OK, so there's services that modules will receive. So we can maybe go to store first. So this is basically a replacement for store keys. Um, so currently, we have like this SDK context, which takes store keys, but um, it's kind of a fixed number of services it can support. This uses the out-of-the-box Go context, and then each module would receive one of these services instead of a store key. Um, and these services let you access the the store, the KV store. So that's kind of like the 
the um, new refactored API for store for 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 yeah for accessing store. There's also an event service um, that we have, um, which similarly takes just the regular Go context and lets you emit events. It also specifies um, that the ADR32 typed events are planned to be included in consensus. Um, and we even added um, some, some a specification for event listeners so that modules can listen to um, events emitted by other modules, which is a replacement for hooks. Um, that's all specified by the, um, the app module, um, the, the core app module. So the core app module is basically just a tag interface that doesn't implement any, anything by itself. Um, it just kind of tags um, for the dependency injection that this is an app module. And then there's extension interfaces that you can implement an extension interface to register um, query and message services. You can register a begin and end blocker. Um, we've removed all dependencies on Tendermint here so that this is modules that use this would be compatible with any version of Tendermint and could be compatible with other consensus engines. Um, and maybe you can go to the one for um, events. Um, uh, uh, module event, yeah. So there's a way to register event listeners. Um, we haven't implemented the support for this yet on main, but that um, hopefully will be coming soon. Um, there's a new Genesis, which supports streaming Genesis, um, and it will support streaming Genesis for both collections and ORM if you're using those frameworks. Um, so if you go to genesis.go um, under app module, yeah, there's a new Genesis API that supports this um, streaming of fields. Um, and then another thing that is specified here, um, not yet supported, is the intermodule um, inter kind of client, which allows you to send messages and queries to other clients as specified in ADR33. So um, most things have been specified in, in this core module as just as interfaces. And then we've started adding support for these things to the app module. Um, and so some of it will be, Actually, a lot of the stuff, the support for this is backportable. So we're going to backport support to 47. And we're actually backporting adapters to previous versions of the SDK so that if you build a module with the core API, um, it should be compatible with the latest SDK. And there should be a way to make it work with older SDKs. Um, and you wouldn't, and eventually you wouldn't need to even introduce a dependency on the SDK proper. You would just depend on core. Core would give you some mock services and some testing utilities. And then the app would implement the SDK. And then um, you know, your module should work with whatever version of the SDK is, is imported. Yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, just kind of like iterating that, um, at least for me, when, when it clicked, like, OK, now modules won't depend on the SDK is really ties into the story of modules being their own Go mods. Um, and so now modules kind of, once they start implementing the core API and the core API is completed, then it's going to be easier to do cross version support of modules within the, within the monolith of the core SDK. Um, some, uh, does anyone have any questions on that? I have a few. Uh, thanks yeah. for like presenting it. That's super interesting. Um, so the core API, is there any documentation about it, or is it basically the core package? Uh, we will be working on documentation, yes. Um, so the right now, um, there's a we're working on revamping the base app docs for EBCI um, changes um, and the various features that that enables. Um, we're also working on auto CLI docs. Um, and then we will begin working on Cosmos SDK core docs alongside um, working with the team that uh, or um, maintains the tutorials to update uh, the tutorials to use the core API. So as I understand, um, there's the also ADR 63 that. Um, yeah, there's also. So as I understand, the core API basically is like the set of new interfaces for the modules and clients. Just for modules to implement. Modules, yeah. OK. And, and uh, uh, and you mentioned that you want to backport some of the some parts of the core API to 47 and 46 as well, or only 47? Uh, 46 and uh, 45. 
Oh, and uh, for the auto CLI, um, that um, that requires 47, or there is like any going to be any benefit or any support for 46? Uh, it already works with 46. Um, Julian was testing it against Atmos, which is using 046, I believe. Aaron, you tested against region that uses 045. 046. Um, 046. Yeah, yeah. It, it works. In, I would say it works in a limited to a limited extent with change before 47. Um, there's going to be some bugs because older chains only support gRPC reflection. Um, we could maybe find a way to backport support for Cosmos Reflection. The Cosmos Reflection lets you download the full file descriptor set. Um, with gRPC Reflection, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, and also, you, there's no way. Um, there's the Auto CLI service. Maybe we could backport that, which has kind of like, like it tries currently. It tries to make guesses about chains that don't explicitly implement these things, so not everything will be supported. Like custom modules generally aren't. But we can we can add we can add a list of mappings for custom modules if that's useful. And it's not possible to use Cosmos Reflection in forty six. The service like the Cosmos Reflection service to download all the file descriptors isn't isn't in forty six. Right. You just have to use right. GRPC Reflection and. Yeah, but it's not possible to backport it or like to integrate it with forty six. It's it's hard because there's um, the file descriptor set is actually kind of uh, corrupted in older versions. There's like some duplicate file descriptors that um, that like there's, there's it down with it can't use them. Like they're just messed mm -hmm. up. Like it it can't it can't um it can't deal there's with this the issue in the registry basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Anyone else just before I move on to a quick update of other things? OK. Um, so, um, so there's a lot of the team, some of the team is working on supporting core API. The, the circuit breaker is also heavily underway. Um, we're writing, we're um, experimenting with BDD tests. We have various modules that have already been spun out into their own Go mods, um, and pretty soon we're we're working on reducing the dependency graph, so um, there isn't as large of an update when we do major releases. Um, so, so, um, uh, we are also upstreaming expedited proposals. So this is a feature that Osmosis implemented, and we've been seeing other chains pull those changes into their forks of SDK, and so we're um, Julian's working on upstreaming that to the SDK for users. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's a, a lot of the work. There's a lot of work going on on IABL. The PR um, that was uh, the PR for removing orphans was recently merged, and we are currently uh, undergoing review of the node key format changes um, and working. John is working on implementing a way to make import and export backwards compatible so we can potentially use that API to reconstruct current state but also state sync will work as well. Um, any 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 questions of some of these items? Awesome. Gonna stop presenting. Um, actually, I need to go back to presenting. Um, Bez, are you here? I believe he just stepped out. Yes. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'm going to reshare my screen and then briefly go over the ABR for ABCI 2.0, so you kind of have an idea of what to expect. So. Um, so this is the, the feedback that we are seeking. So um, to first, um, just to remind everyone what ABCI 2.0 entails, um, there's two changes to ABCI 2.0. The first one is an addition, and the first, the second one is more of a cleanup, I'd say. So the first one that's an addition is vote extensions. What vote extensions is, is the application has the opportunity to put in some sort of a state to be signed by the validators using their consensus key 
Um, and then once there is consensus on the blocks and the state, this data will be given back to the application. So this could be used for something like oracles instead of uh, oracles submitting transactions. The second one is finalized block. What finalized block does is it takes begin block, deliver transactions, and end block, and combines it into a single, um, a single stage. So it becomes finalized block. And in finalized block, the, um, the API is, uh, ooh, I don't know how to traverse this anymore. Um, the, uh, I actually don't know where the, I'm lost in this rebar nowadays. Um, but stay tuned, there, there will be some news coming um, about Tendermint. Um, but the, the API is basically, it's a batch of transactions and finalized block and uh, begin block and end block are merged into a single stage. This does not mean that the um, begin block and end block stages will be removed. We will be supporting them in the SDK as they are useful for many applications and to tell applications that they have to remove the concept of begin block and end block would be detrimental to the ecosystem. So um, this, let me see if Ben's if I can get Ben's back. Uh, does, does it include all the deliver TXs as well? Yeah, it's, it, it's like a batch. Okay. 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 Um, we'll just go to the next topic to wait to Bez to get back to us. Um, there was, uh, or, oh, Bez is here. Is he? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I saw, I saw your message. Sorry. Um, okay. He's on a train. Um, so let's go to investing accounts. Um, the, uh, so I'm not sure who added vesting accounts. So whoever added, can you speak up? Or maybe we added it from last week because we, it was a discussion point from last week. I think it was that actually, um, there's there, so there is uh, a larger discussion on vesting accounts. There's a need for revamping how vesting works and, um, potentially pulling it out into its own module. Um, or um, there's the optionality of creating a new vesting module and not touching the existing vesting, but marking it as um, deprecated. Um, so Freddie, do you wanna talk about the abstraction um, you are yeah. proposing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically uh, I've created uh, for Archway the vesting contracts in, which are written in, in, in Cosmosm they went through audit like you you can also like governance vote and and like stake using them and they they uh went through audit and yeah like everything was 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 fine and i wanted to actually propose to like translate that same design into a consensus is sdk module which would basically turn vesting into like accounts which are not externally owned but basically can be uh, accessed like can can be accessed only by by uh by one one person and you can basically send to your vesting account a, a, a delegation message uh an delegation message a governance vote vote message and the vesting account does this stuff for you so basically vesting it's not your account but it's an account that's not externally owned but that you cannot control i i, I hope that sort of makes sense it's kind of like a, an account abstraction um it's uh, like a module account that is owned by account with a private key. Exactly. Does, it, does it make sense to like you know treat it as an account and like instead of like thinking about it as a you know a vault or like a basket? Yeah, we well, it's difficult to say it's not a, an account because that address, even if if it's not like a, a, a real account is gonna stake and uh, and like vote for you. So it's yeah. it's difficult not to think about it as like 
an identity which lives in, in, in the actual chain. Yeah, exactly. So that's my point. Like, would it make more sense to you know, like not call it an account because you no know, account we have account interface? And yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it, it that should not implement the account interface. interface. No, no. Yeah, sorry, go it on. No, no, it won't implement the, the account interface. It won't Im oh, implement exactly. We yeah, yes. we keep it as an entity that lives on chain and it can be controlled by an externally owned account, but uh, it performs only a certain set of action with certain li limitations. Yeah, so my point is basically to not call it account. Maybe even it doesn't have to have an address, right? It's just like a, uh, an I, object. No, no, no. It's, it's going to have an, an, an address because when you delegate uh, that account, like that thing, which I'm not sure how how how, how we're going to call, it's going to have an address once it, it delegates coins to like some validator. It needs yes, to. But, but why? And well, it, it, it needs it needs that to, to play well with the existing staking data structures. Exactly. Correct. Correct. Yeah, but you could use. So let's say I have. So okay, let's think about like this idea that you know uh, you have a vesting account. It's not an account. It's just a vault, right? And um, it it will basically represent. It's an object, yes, which represents like all the limitations my account has for the bank protocol. And when I delegate, I still delegate because technically I, I own all these tokens. Yeah, but the like the limitations it has, they are not imposed from bank. They are imposed from the actual new vesting module. So like bank is not gonna mm. be, be 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 changed, or is not gonna change. Nothing is gonna change. It's just gonna be like a new module, which does not interact with like does not force us to like change any e existing module, if that may make sense to mm -hmm. you. And it needs to have an address because mm -hmm. like when you are gonna query for these accounts, delegate for these things, delegation, you will need an actual address, to, like okay. get info ab ab about that. Then the question is gonna be, how can we make UX nice for this thing? Like if I have multiple vesting account, is there a way from UX level that I can club everything into like a single thing so that when I query the de delegations for myself, can I also get those for my vesting account? But that's a separate concern. This just like gives some, some food for thought on how a new vesting module might, might look like. One, one question here is, um, so currently in the vesting module, um, we have multiple different design multiple different vesting types. So there's like, um, and there's other types that are like extended by, um, that are added by Agoric, Edmos and stuff like this. Is the design that like, um, there is just like a single uh, vesting account type or a single vesting type. Um, and then is that like, is multiple types of vesting needed here or? I like this is still so, something that I'm trying to let's say understand, but ideally I I would like to explore a concept of 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 module that it's extendable. Like I'm I'm not sure how to to to, to actually explain it, but a module which gives you some some building blocks, and you can work on those building blocks to like create different types of vesting account. If that make 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 make, make sense. And for yes. for sure, I don't want to go towards the interface registry path. Like I, th I think that thing is not something we 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 actually want. Yeah, I, I think like um, uh, NFT might do something similar. Like NFT is like the base logic, and then like the the like custom logic that you want to do for like NFT, you like wrap the NFT module in in the SDK and extend it in your way. Um, so that could be like one potential route. Yeah. Uh, one quick uh, note here on the different kinds of vesting accounts: the uh, all but one can uh, of the standard vesting accounts can be expressed as like special cases of the periodic vesting account, and our clawback vesting account is is a further extension of that and and can also 
subsume all the rest except for the period or the continuous vesting account, uh, which doesn't, uh, you know, I, I'd be curious to see what uh, what kind of uh, uh, you you know who who is using the the continuous vesting account as opposed to one with more discrete vesting events. Most vesting accounts are continuous. Oh. On on which chain? Hub, Admos, Umi. Okay. At least all, all at least all of mine are continuous. Okay. Um it's kind of like oh. the most basic way to implement uh vesting, right? Like you have a start a start period, which is like your cliff. And after that, you vest monthly, or, or sorry, daily, or blockly, really. Uh, so it's kind of like the most basic way to implement vesting. So I think it's used pretty, pretty heavily. Yeah, yeah I would like oh. to add. So, um, so custom vesting logic is a typical example that that is or can be implemented in WASM contracts. So this is a typical use case. It comes with some benefits. So like the address and all the logic that that exists there. So having like a native new vesting module sounds very interesting. So with the current vesting module, I uh, often ran into issues with the, the address namespace. Yeah, so any address on the chain can become a vesting address or investing account. Oh, yeah. that, there was quite some, yeah, some issue in the past. There will be an issue in the future. So if we could somehow get that out of our way, that would be a nice thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see some issues like um, what do we do with the existing vesting accounts? It's not that they can super easily be transferred into the new model um, because they have keys. And um, so how, how should that work, right? I mean, there needs to be some thinking how we could migrate if we have two different vesting solutions. I think that would be a bit problematic. And um, my, my third point, on, that, that came, well, the thing that came into my mind, if I would have um, a vesting account, I would not necessarily have tokens to interact with it, right? So if I have a continuous vesting account, the, the old one, then I would have tokens after you know, a period, and then I can interact with it. I can spend, I can can do things, but if I don't have any tokens, but have a, a, this new vesting account, then I cannot do anything, right? So this is the, uh, the seed issue. That would have, yeah. There needs to be a solution or some some way. But yeah, there are grants and there's things yeah. that that could work. But just I want to bring it on um, on the plate. Definitely yeah. agree. Um, what, what I mean, one potential is like account key rotation, and then you migrate it to the um, you allow vesting accounts to be migrated to a, uh, a module account address that is created in the, in the new vesting module. But uh, for the, that's pretty raising your hand. Yeah, I I, th I think that migrating the current vesting account to, to like this this new vesting module or any any other vesting module is I would say tricky and maybe dangerous for some aspects because right now vesting accounts they are externally owned. So what's gonna happen to to like your 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 account? Like I I think maybe we could provide. And we need to like study in an extremely cautious way. Uh, like it's not that would happen. Like let's say the new vesting accounts come in version 0 0.49 of, of, of the SDK. I don't think it's safe to force everybody to actually migrate to the, the, the new vesting accounts. But I think we could study a way, like uh I don't know. It 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 can be a vesting message in 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 the new in the new vesting module to basically migrate your existing vesting account into this new version of of the vesting account. But surely it wouldn't be forced because it might have unforeseen consequences because current vesting accounts they are externally owned and this is a big problem. That's all. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um I started talking with uh, uh, Freudy, uh, you know, kind of uh, in the in the tech group. And my apologies for giving this feedback 
uh, without uh, bouncing it off you first, uh, Freudy, but uh, uh, one thing I'm kind of concerned with is the the additional complexity of uh, sort of needing to manage the new vesting account uh, separately from uh, with regards to the to the staking commands. Uh, as you mentioned, we might be able to uh, paper over that a little bit with uh, with with some UI logic that will kind of automatically multiplex a a staking command across your normal account and all of the vesting accounts. But even then, I don't think it can fully uh, give you the flexibility of the of the current system, which basically uh, maximizes the availability of tokens. That if there's any kind of encumbrance because of staking or any uh, effect from like slashing, it automatically hits your uh, un unvested tokens first before encumbering. Uh, we're affecting uh, anything that is that is vested. So it kind of the the system currently maximizes uh, your freedom and and uh, has the effect of managing in the ideal way. And I don't think you can get that by uh, by this uh, partitioning uh, uh, into separate account like things that each stakes individually. Uh, uh, Freud, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think it can be done because, uh, uh, like, what I did for Archer was actually claw, claw, clawback vesting accounts, and you can see clawback as a form of like slashing, right? If you think about it, like clawback, mm. it's not like our 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 a real slash, but it sort of be, be, be behaves like it, and uh, like this supply that you are seeing in reality is not locked. It's unlocked, and you can have knowledge of like what's really happening, and you can calculate uh, what was slashed or, or or what wasn't slashed com compared that what what it is what it is actually unlocked. Uh, it's complex to like e e explain because like there there is a little of of math be behind it, but it's actually possible to like uh, let's say exclude what was slashed, what was lost, uh, what what is locked. From what is actually unlocked, so it's possible for us, of course, to like make this differentiation at versus supply level, if that makes sense to you. Uh, not, not they, in the moment, yeah. but we should talk talk more. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. A problem okay. we 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 have, of course, is the UX problem because so suddenly people do not have, like, let's say, a single point of entry. To like che check what is their delegation state, that's I think of of uh, their their real challenge with this new proposal of of vesting module. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. like, it's more difficult even from like at personal level. It's like you are dealing with two different accounts. That's that's their yeah. reality. So like we should try to like find ways to to make things easier. And I'm I'm not sure really how we. We can go about it, but of course, I I think there are ways, and we can explore them. Yeah, uh, one one common use case for uh, for vesting at at least under uh, you know in U.S. tech companies is to give like a new vesting grant annually that vests over like four years, and so you you typically might have. Uh, you know, a, a small number of separate vesting grants at any one time. So, you know, rather than just, you know, your normal and one vesting account, it might be a half dozen uh, vesting accounts. And that kind of you know, adds to the complexity. Uh, did, did you get a chance to take a look at uh, discussion 14271 uh, referenced yes. in last week's, last yes. time's notes? Yes, yes. Okay. I uh, and did, have a look, yes. Okay, and it's it's also worth taking a look at the uh, uh, general uh, interdiction uh, uh, interface that uh, Daniel came up with. That 
you know, it, you know, an alternative design is to uh, look at the the vesting uh, just as an encumbrance on a single account that you can kind of calculate however you want, and that that this would step in and just say nope when whenever you try to uh, transfer something out, which is you know essentially what you're trying to do with the with the unvested tokens is just prevent their transfer. Uh, and, uh, you know, with, uh, in, in our system, we're, we're adding another kind of encumbrance with, uh, what we call liens. We want the ability to take a loan out against the, the future reward stream of some staked tokens. And that introduces another kind of encumbrance. And by the you know, zero one infinity rule, uh, the the fourteen two seventy one is is a proposal for adding many separate dimensions of like liability against an account, so that you can't uh, uh, so that you can encumber the same tokens for many different reasons. And it looks like it will play well with uh, with staking, normal vesting, and uh, and also the the uh, liens. And we might think of other uh, uh, other applications. And uh, like I said last time, it it th this mechanism itself plays well as uh, another kind of thing that you can plug into Daniel's. Uh, you know, general, uh, you know, uh, can't transfer check. So I, I think we should continue this discussion, uh, uh, Freddie, because, uh, you know, I, I, I think a, a way of just saying uh, the vesting calculates an amount you can't transfer within one existing account uh avoids a lot of the complications from having the tokens stored in a separate uh you know separate container of of some sort that needs to you know uh and then needs that you then need to multiplex your management over uh oh and 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 also our uh lean mechanism would would then be further complicated by the need to also do such multiplexing or or any uh, other uh, additional style of encumbrance on account. I think it's worth. Does that make um, sense? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's worth like uh, you can start a doc on like various features that uh, should or should be supported or people want to be supported. Um, with any investing, and then we can kind of like evaluate that and like build around it. Um, I think there's like, uh, there's always going to be like someone who, there's always going to be like uh, someone against something. And I think that's the, the goal, like, here at least should be like make it extendable, make it, um, make it modular per se, so people can extend it and customize it with their own use case. Um, and like, yeah, pretty. Yeah, I I just want to, to like mention like the current design plans to like not have to rely on modifying the existing modules. So a vesting account should should be capable to like do whatever you 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 want it to to actually do, without having to like mess with bank, mess with staking, mess with oath. Like this is the actual I, I, I idea. I think it can be executed. But of course, we uh, we need to see like what are the uh, prominent use cases and understand if they are app applicable in this design. Awesome. Just with the uh, keep keeping time in mind. Um, oh, hundred percent, Aaron. Yeah, we should entirely like refactor off. Um, there's uh, I'd love also love to like I uh, was thinking today we should start a, a an epic issue we have the epic issue of refactoring auth and bank um, we should we could we should create one for auth and we should create one for bank and start collecting feature requests and various uh, designs and do some like research around the ecosystem on like what other chains are doing I think there's like a lot of 
really cool designs out there. Um, I think Substrate's account model is really good. They have a really good social recovery mechanism. Um, and so there's a lot of things uh, to do here. Um, 100% agree. Um, did you want to add anything else, Aaron, just before we move on? Yeah, I just I just would say that like I think not touching auth and not refactoring those components should be a non goal. Like I think yeah, it should be a goal to touch those components and and rip out things like vesting that aren't working optimally um, and, and shouldn't really even be there. Um, so, hundred um, percent. Sweet. Uh, Bez, just checking in with you if you're back. Um, or if you're I back. am back, but I the vesting discussion took longer than I thought it would, so I have, unfortunately have to run. Okay, um, I'll, I'll get I would. I I, I think in I, I think the discussion around vote extension would also go a lot better if people read. Uh, my comment in the ADR PR as well as the ADR as it is as it stands right now. So that way it would be a little bit more fruitful discussion the next on the next community call. Otherwise, I, I probably would just be describing it here without a lot of context for people. Makes sense. I also um, moved it up so we can also talk about it on the next call, but I'll also post it awesome. in the various channels for people to read. Um, cool. We do have seven minutes left. Uh, I'm not sure, Aaron, what, do you think that's enough time to like do a brief refresher on ADR 33 or should we reserve more time? Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard, I, I think. I mean, we could, we could, we could, I could mention some things, mention what's being discussed with ADR 54, just so that people are aware and, but, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't do, think do you to chat about it a bit, but yeah, we're not going to be able to get really deep. Yeah. Um, do you want me to share my screen and open ADR or something? Um, maybe. So would it be more useful to start with ADR 33 or ADR 54? Uh, I, I think it's entirely up to you. OK, so all right, ADR 33, like, I think the thing, OK, let me briefly just give a summary of what ADR 33 does. I think we've agreed to implement this and to support it. Um, the question is, like, how extensively we're going to be using it. So ADR 33 basically uh, de describes intermodule communication. And it's, I mean, it's a pretty simple concept. Like modules implement these message servers and these query servers, um, which are generated from the um, protobuf service definitions. And that's how they serve, um, you know, that's how they support queries and, and messages for clients. Um, and ADR33 just specifies a way for modules to make these same uh, query and message calls to each other. Um, and defines like what the mess what the modules uh, um, identity is f for purposes of like authorizing intermodule calls. Um, and so this has actually been merged into the core module as a um, there's an intermodule client that's been merged. There is a um, an implementation that I've had in draft for a few months, just haven't had a time to really wrap that up. Um, but the most recent version is actually, if you look in core, there's the interface for intermodule client. Um, and that defines that a module um, will have a root account, which is, you know, a lot of modules currently have this, a root module account. And they can also um, have a derived module account. So you can have sub accounts, which would be the case for the group module, the case for Cosmosm. Um, that you know, kind of each account they manage is its own, can it have its own client. Um, and the main the main thing here to look at is the the fact that it implements the gRPC client connection interface. That interface allows you to create any message or query client, basically any 
any of those clients that are generated by the gRPC code gen. Um, so that's you know been discussed quite a bit over the past few years. Um, we've agreed that having this as the kind of unified way for route like modules, there there are several cases where modules will pass messages back to the router. Um, we want to have a unified way for this to happen, and so this is a unified way for messages to basically get sent back to the router. Okay, ADR54. Um, actually, before I get, get to that, just one of the big things that we're looking at is, okay, we've agreed to support this, but just supporting it doesn't mean that we deprecate keepers as a way for modules to talk to each other. But we are discussing deprecating keepers as a way for modules to talk to each other. And just and um, refactoring the basically the whole code base so that modules only talk to each other using these intermodule calls. Um, there are some there were are certain more things that we need to add. We need to add some sort a certain layer of um, internal calls that um, for doing kind of more complex things than are supported by the existing messages and queries to completely replace keepers. But you know, theoretically, we could just refactor all of the um, everything that's done in keepers to use these this uh, client um, interface and the like. The motivation that there's there's a number of reasons why we're considering that. Um, one has to do with like the stability of the interfaces. Um, so like the protofiles define like a stable interface that um, that can be depended on that we could potentially implement modules in other programming languages like Rust and they could um, there could be Rust modules living alongside the Go modules. Um, and I, in the context of hmm? I'm so sorry, I, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, but you can finish and I can ask. Well, I was just going to say in the context of ADR54, um, we're considering how this paradigm makes it easier to have different versions of modules depend on different versions of other modules. Um, or maybe maybe I could say it the other way. ADR54 deals with how can we have one version of a module support different versions of its dependencies. Um, and vice versa. And ADR54 is an analysis of this problem of like, you compose modules with different versions that, that they weren't necessarily, um, if you compose modules with different versions of their dependencies than they were built with, um, what kind of weird gotchas does that introduce and how can we mitigate them? And fully migrating towards this um, intermodule communication is one way to kind of be able to uh, like observe the calls that our modules are making to each other and make sure that these are um, safe and within protocol calls um, and and that there's like a a clear story about the compatibility between different versions. So um, kind of like about the ADR33, uh, a quick question is um, how would the client and server be expressed in like wasm like i know and in potentially like cosmosm if uh, if a module wants to call into cosmosm and we have this paradigm will wasm be able to um will a contract be able to define messages that can be called via this internal message router and then in the future like let's say if we go down the path of seeing what would it look like to have modules in the sdk compiled to wasm like how would we express gRPC at that level? Yeah, I mean, it just becomes a, you're just going through the WASM interface. Um, so you would, you would need to probably, I mean, with the current encoding, we need to encode the messages and support a buff binary. And then um, you would have a WASM call and you call that, that WASM function and it would then get you know, routed to wherever it needs to go. And, Wasm. Um, there is a proposal that that I've I put out there. Of also, um, we could explore some sort of zero copy encoding, so you wouldn't need to do an encode and a decode step. Um, that's a bit more complicated, but it, it could make that more like streamlined. Mm -hmm. 
really prefer to you raising your hand. Yeah, I, I have a question with regards to like API compatibility between, between like let's say Wasm and uh, and like the, the SDK. Since like Wasm follows like a different like, model compared to like uh, the, the Marco, can you mute? I can't actually hear. For... Okay. No, I I was uh, since like the Cosm wasn't like has a different execution model in in which like they don't have like uh, an RPC like API. They basically return things like uh, so. Like I I I, I, was, I was wondering how this discrepancy at API level it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like, Cosm it wouldn't be Cosm model. Ah, okay, be okay. Cosm. Thank you. Like you know maybe there's some shared tooling that could be used, but um yeah, it would be a different like Cosm wasn't defines a Wasm API that for that those contracts would be a different was an API. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's, um, yeah. So it, it is the top of the hour. Um, does anyone have any questions? This was like a very quick, um, like refresher, I'd say. But in the next calls, we will also be uh, further diving into this subject as well. Uh, yeah, maybe one question. Um, for the 047 release, uh, what's the main blocker right now? Some tests or? Uh, um, basically, like uh, IBC, we want to do like an integrated test net with IBC and POSM and open that to the public. And so IBC just mm. did their. Uh, beta or alpha tag. And so we'll be doing that test net um, ideally starting tonight and then um, have a couple of people play around with it. Uh, and hopefully in that time, we're able to um, solve the file descriptor issue um, that we have identified with Hubble. Um, and if so, then we're ready for the release. And is there already Cosm Wasm migrated to 47? Yes, uh, Alex. Um, Alex. Peter from Confio has been working on that, and we've been syncing on it weekly. Uh, it's under upstream repository in the branch, or it's somewhere else? Uh, I believe it's in Wasm D. Um, Alex, maybe you can. Yeah. Um, so they have the branch for Wasm D for the um, SDK 47 um, integration. Not sure which versions Marco is, is going to use. So um, so we haven't agreed on final SDK or are we sick of versions. But um, the integration is, is done with uh, yeah, some okay, latest versions of, of some um, of the release branches. So um, quite edgy. Um, yeah, tests were, were passing so far. So the integration tests and, and unit tests and so on. A lot of work was spent on that. But uh, yeah, we need to finalize it and test it, of course. Okay, and like just for sure feedback, do you? I mean, what was the main problem of of the of the migration? Um, there's no migration path yet, and um, I mean, if you you ask me how to migrate from a forty five to a forty seven chain, so this is something we we need to. Um, oh yeah, because you, you went you had to went from forty five. I see. Yes, so that that's a supported version, and so what we are doing is just early integration so that we have something uh, good to test and uh, help the community to move um, faster than in the past and have yeah a good stable release with all all the nice shiny components mm -hmm. yeah because we're already using in a test net um cosm wasm but migrated to 46 and uh, like i was wondering if like there is any um and the breaking change related to uh, like if if you would need to like now go to forty seven uh, in the Cosmosm itself or it's just out of the box. So Cosmosm is still using the um, uh, one dot two Cosmosm VM. So um, so one dot two is the latest version that is is used there. It's backward compatible and about your local branch how to. Migrate that one to um, to the edgy forty seven version. I would just suggest take a look at the um, at the div. So it's IBC Go. You need to upgrade this IBC um, the SDK stuff and so on. But yeah, no, I, um, I'm aware about that. I mean, we are using a fork, um, custom Watson uh, forty six and uh, 
uh, sorry, of course, Wasm, yes, uh, yeah, Lee Wasm D. Um, so it was MD, right? And uh, uh, yeah, uh, working with 46. So I was like wondering if if you would like to test it with 47, if there is um, any additional change required, except like, you know, <laughs> dependencies upgrade. Yeah, let's let's follow up on that on, on Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's um, have fingers crossed that the 47 test that works, we all bang on that. And then um, we can, I mean, there are more chains that they want to upgrade to 47 then. So we coordinate on Discord and find a solution and document as much as possible. That will be my suggestion. Yes. Um, okay. um, sorry, Jim. Uh, just a quick, somewhat related question. Uh, what's the uh, status of Gaia moving to 46? Uh, I, I think they, I think they uh, are continuing with forty-five because of ICS. Okay. I, I think uh, because of ICS and uh, I think Cosmosm didn't update to O forty-six. Okay. Uh, right. Actually, yeah. Oh no, it's I, yeah. Well, one of the repositories in like ICS Hub Wasm didn't uh, didn't move to O forty-six. There's like a weird dependency graph there. I think Gaia um, will stay for yeah. a while at 45. Yeah, I think Gaia will stay for a while at 45 because. Um, yeah, I could see that as well. Okay. Because Thank like I'm, I'm now they, the. They really um, fast. Yeah, I mean, I think they just want to you know, like they focus on this, uh, like you said. Um, Interchain security and that start getting forty five and like nobody was going to test with anything else. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that wraps it up. Thanks. I'm gonna stop the recording. Thanks everyone for.